After that, just thank you to Ms. Sheila Hemp, Brad Holmes, and Coach Campbell for just believing in me, trading up to get me. Like, I don't take that lightly. Uh, it's a sacrifice that they made, and uh, I feel like I'm going to reward them for that. What was last night like for you after you kind of let things settle in and, and you kind of settled in and saw and reflected on what your, your night was like being selected and having all that crowd, too, and, and everything that went with it? I went to sleep a lion. <laughs> And I woke up a lion, so I think that says the gist of that. You got your defensive coordinator that, that was a cornerback in this league for a long time, played at a really high level. What do you think the benefits of that are? What were those conversations like with Aaron when, when you were here? Just what kind of guy did you did you kind of get that he was? Well, when I first came here, he said that he saw something in me. And uh, I was like, Coach, you probably see that dog. <laughs> so then uh, just after that, formulating a relationship with him and being around him, I could tell that he wasn't a pretender. A lot of times, real recognize real. And that's the same thing with him recognizing me. Uh, I told him that I like to be coach hard. Obviously, my background coming from Coach Saban, with him just being like a perfectionist. And then with him, he's a player first coach. So I feel like he'll be able to get the best out of me. And uh, not only that, he'll develop me into becoming a better man. He's seen a lot of things. Playing for 15 years in the NFL, man, you don't take that lightly. So um, I'm ready to learn from him. Have any teammates reached out to you at all, you know, kind of just kind of breaking the ice a little bit, text or calls or anything? Uh, on Wednesday, before drive night, Brian Branch was at my dinner, so we just got a chance to catch up, jail. And I've been talking to him consistently throughout the season, just talking about how proud I was of him. And uh, funny story, uh, when he caught his first pick, because he didn't really have any uh, – Opportunities like that, Alabama, he had a pick six. So I congratulated him on that. And just to see him grow, uh, not into, not only into a better player, but a better man, uh, it's been amazing to see. And then just right after I got drafted, J-Mo called me. And he was like, we going up tonight. So uh, just looking forward to being around him. He's a fun, energetic guy. And we uh, feed off of stuff like that. So I'm really stoked about going against him in one-on-ones and stuff. And, just molded him into a better player and him molded me into a better player. And then Jameer, it just speaks for itself. Uh, he's a quiet guy. But uh, most people don't know Jameer, man. He's a great dude on the inside and an even better player on out. So. You experienced something you know, very few people on the circuit, too, you know, being a, a first round pick. Can you just explain like what that feeling is like, you know, and, and really what the past, you know, 12 or 24 hours have been like, you know, living out a fulfilling a dream? Well, you take time to uh, obviously celebrate it. Uh, me and my granddad, we have this thing where whenever I have an accomplishment, we celebrate for like three seconds. So after that, uh, it was amazing. I'm, I'm very blessed. And I, like I continue to say, I thank Jesus for this opportunity. But now I'm just ready to get to work. I feel like this is the time to take the next step. I established myself in college. The Lions traded up to get me. So now it's time to establish myself in the National Football League. When you three seconds, is there any, anything about the three seconds? that It's literally like this. You say, T, let's celebrate. <laughs> and then we done. <laughs> nah, it ain't nothing more. Nothing more, nothing less. I imagine this is your first time in Detroit, is that right? Second. Second time. Came on top 30. Uh, right, right. I'm curious your first impressions of the, the city, the people, what you've just been able to see about the, the city itself so far. Well, if I'm being honest with you, my first time here, I wasn't really happy about it because we lost to Michigan and Alabama. So. <laughs> But then uh, after that, just being in the city, being in the environment, and uh, the crowd, just to hear them chanting my name last night, uh, I've always dreamed of moments like that as a kid. I've considered myself like a fan favorite. And I've always wanted to rep that uh, when they show up to games on Mondays, Thursdays, or Sundays, uh, I just get the name that uh, I don't know what's going to happen today, but I feel like Terry on is going to do something incredible. So just to uh, be able to play into that and uh, be the Deion Sanders or have that era and this generation here in Detroit, it's going to be exciting and fascinating to see. Texting calls you've gotten with congratulations. Was there one that stood out as particularly meaningful to you, Tyrion? Uh, my great grandmother. My great grandmother. She's not uh really into football. <laughs> in fact, uh, when my granddad played back in the day, she called it the devil. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> just to see how she's came along and been there to support me, it's been amazing. And, uh, when I called her, uh, I have to call her because, I mean, you know, she's a little older. But uh, when I called her this morning after everything had died down, I asked her, did she see it? And she was like, she was so happy for me and proud of me. And she was like, that's far. So uh, my great-grandmother, I would have had her in the green room with me, but um, she had a crazy experience with a plane and she doesn't fly. So for her to just say, well, you know, now I might have to get on the plane, 
I feel like I call it like a Detroit blessing, man. It's just something about being in here, being in this city. It's going to be fun, and it's going to be blessings everywhere. When looking at your, at your game, what do you pride yourself on specifically? Uh, I pride myself on being a quarterback and a cornerback. Just coming in here, obviously high expectations. I don't look at any of that. Same thing with the mock drafts. People could have kind of saw like, wow, I didn't expect Terry Arnold to go this low. I expect him to go higher. But honestly, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. That's why when I grabbed the mic, I said, I'm home. And I feel like everything happens for a reason. And I just call this moment for such a time as this. How do you and Branch push each other? Push each other? Well, me and Branch is like the second coming of me and Kool-Aid. Just, he just plays nickel. So uh, with Branch, he's a low key, kind of quiet guy, but he's a killer. On the field, like his instinct literally is to kill you. And then after that, he's just a nice guy. But um, as far as pushing each other, uh, he's established himself. Like Branch, just to see, and I already talked about it, the growth that he had from coming from Alabama to almost winning a uh, defensive rookie of the year, it just speaks volumes. Like the guy's character is amazing, but he's a workaholic. Like I remember days at Alabama, he would just stay on the field. It would be him and I on the jump machines. And then um, just as far as him pushing me, <laughs> he's a funny guy. So, like, if I go out there and have a pass caught on me, he'd be like, T, come on, man. Like, like I know it. I can already imagine the jokes. Like, they traded up for this? Like, <laughs> like that's, that's him. Like, that's, that's how him and I are. But it's going to always be like that. You know, I just look forward to lining up, <laughs> getting the call from him, smiling at him, and then catching the pick, saying, I told you so. You uh, take mention the other day too. What is it about his style, his flash, his playmaking that you want to emulate here in Detroit? Um, just as far as being exciting. Like when you watch Deion Sanders, you just think about excitement. Like you're going to the games to see a show. Same thing with me. Like when the ball is in the air, you know who coming down with it. And then we play in a tough division. So as far as going against the Bears, going against the Vikings, it's gonna be amazing. Like those are the games that you live for. And uh, it's gonna be a chance to just go out there and really show I am an alpha dog. I mean, you're going to have matchups where you win and lose, but even just being in the city and them embracing me, you can kind of tell, like, we have loyal fans. And I feel like as long as you're loyal to them, they'll be loyal to you too. Okay, I want to ask you about that. Last year, you know, they kind of changed the narrative and kind of broke the ice a little bit getting to the NFC Championship. Like, you said you had a little – you was invested a little more because you knew guys that play here. I guess your perception of just the team and have you envisioned how you see yourself in playing with those guys as you was watching them a little extra last year? I envision myself as coming in here humble and just open to learn. I don't think I know everything. I don't want to come in here and just be that rookie who thinks he's going to start. I know I'm going to have to work for everything. I want to learn from the vets. And I, even me being in the locker room, I was in there with some of the veterans, and they just said that they were grateful to have me here. So you could just tell they welcome you with open arms. I don't feel no sense of envy. And even me being myself, I don't want to come off as arrogant. I want to come off as confident, but not arrogant. And I just want to come in here and show that I'm eager to learn and eager to develop. Watching Brian's success last year, you know, coming in, coming from the same college, same program, like, what does that tell you about the opportunity and just kind of like what, like, what was it kind of reflecting on the success he had as a rookie in this defense? What's that, what's that say to you? Just the opportunity, it just shows another thing with Coach Glenn, like, he allows players to go out there and play. Even with my meeting with him earlier, he was like, he's going to develop me into being a better player. At the end of the day, we're young players, like, my ceiling is very high, and, uh, just the teaching, showing up every day with the willingness to work, putting in overtime, you'll get success because in this game, like they say, football reveals character. I wanted to ask you about the, the basketball background, you know, the way it's been written about it. It was your first love, I guess, as a, as a sport. Um, you know, at some point you had to decide, you know, maybe even in the last year or two, to, to kind of put that aside and focus on football. How, how difficult was that decision? And, and I guess, obviously, it was the right one. How grateful are you that you, you chose the path that you have? Um, I've always been a basketball player, but uh, that kind of just goes back to ties with my family. Like, I've always wanted to uh, be like my aunt, like with her just wearing number three and then me wearing number three. Uh, the way I play, I smile. I don't play the game angry. I don't play the game, as they would say, for anybody. I do it for myself. And I, even with me playing basketball, I was just ties with my family. Like, that's what they played growing up. And I, I wanted to be like them and follow in their footsteps. Obviously, I found my path, navigated along the way. It was a bumpy road. I, I fought hard about my decision, but uh, like you said, I did make the right one. What do you think is the biggest thing you learned from saving? I learned that the details, obviously like the little details, as they would say, when you read a book or you watch a movie, every time you reread it or rewatch it, you can learn something new from it. 
So just being around him, I learned something new every day. Whether that had been, hey, man, you got to be able to take hard coaching, be able to take constructive criticism, or you have to go in here and apply the right technique, or it's hot outside and you don't really want to do it, but you have to go out there and do it to the way that he wants to execute it. So I really learned how to be a professional before becoming a professional around Coach Saban. Can you go back over last night, the moment, Dallas is on the clock, there's a trade, you get picked, and just the, the emotions that you had and what it meant to you that, that the Lions jumped up to select you? Uh, it just goes back to what I said earlier. Like, they traded up to select me, and I'll always be grateful for that, and I won't take it for granted. I'll, I'm already coming in here with a chip on my shoulder but it's just going to be that much more of a chip on my shoulder. I saw uh, St. Brown today, and I just asked him, uh, when can we get on the jug machine? Just because uh, I feel like I'm a workaholic. I know that nothing's going to be given to me. And uh, even with him trading up to get me, like you said, like it's that much more than it means. It means more to me with that. What's that chip on your shoulder? That chip on that shoulder comes from that same kid that got benched versus Tennessee. I mean, it's the same thing. It's been driving me. I call it my Michael Jordan moment, and it's going to drive me to that gold jacket. Everyone, we, everyone we, we've talked to has pretty much mentioned you know, your, your pretty big jump from 2022 to 2023. I wonder if there's anything you changed about your approach in, in that year in between or anything you learned in that year in between. I just worked, like, made the sacrifices, had friends that were going out to seek pleasure. Um, I had opportunities to go out there and do that, but I, I had a goal in front of me. I envisioned it, I manifested, and I went out there and got it. Same thing with being here. Like I said, everything is for such a time as this. With Detroit, the next jump is winning the Super Bowl. I feel like the reason why they brought me in here is to help them take that next step. Can you explain you where that work ethic comes from? I know you mentioned your grandfather at the combine. I don't know, maybe just a little more background on kind of why you're such a hard worker, where that comes from. It comes from me. Uh, obviously, like, with. Jesus being my Lord and Savior, he instilled it in me from a very young age. I'm a competitor, and uh, that work ethic just comes, work, hard work, and the work ethic eliminates fear. So for me to be able to be out here and be confident, tell you I'm going to do this, line up and have this confidence, no matter what, you have to put the work in, unless you're delusional. So uh, that's where it comes from. You mentioned you talked to St. Brown. He knows exactly who was drafted before him. It's only one guy for you. Is that part of your chip, Quinn Mitchell, maybe? Not at all. When he was drafted, I was happy for him. I was proud of him. And I just told him, hey, man, look forward to seeing you. Look forward to working out with you. And that's been the thing. I feel like in this sport, they like to pair us up against each other. We're all just trying to achieve the same goal. Same thing with Quinn Young. I hope that he has success with the Eagles. I'm going to be rooting for him. And uh, although we weren't friends going into the draft, I feel like we are friends now. When I first saw him at the combine, I shook his hand, introduced myself, because there's no sense of envy. There's no sense of gratitude. I mean, not gratitude, but there's no sense of just hating or like the way that the persona and the media tries to steer it in a different direction. Same thing they did with me and Kool-Aid. They tried to make us hate each other. But when you know who you are and you're confident in yourself, then you don't worry about things like that. Saban said last night that he tried to get Quinion in the portal to go to you guys, and he said no. Did you know that, or does that surprise you? Yeah, he's big on loyalty. So, I mean, he stuck with Toledo. Obviously, if he would have came to Alabama, I would have loved it. It just means I could have played that much more on the inside. We could have rotated. We would have had a better